Hello and welcome to the Independent.ie. I'm Darren. Today I'm here with two of Ireland's leading actors, Baz Black and Paul Fitzgerald. Welcome guys. Thanks for having us. How are you? Yeah, pleasure. So first of all, congratulations on the, fil on the film, Dublin Crust, we can see here. Uh, how was the premiere last night? How did it go? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was um, good to get it kicked off properly, see it up on the big screen. Um, so the premiere was in the brand new Omniplex and Scotch Hall shopping centre in Drogheda last night. Um, so a lot of friends, family, industry people and uh, get that screening out of the way. Obviously everyone very supportive, so it's nice to watch it in that environment for the first time before we roll out now on uh, Friday the 1st. Yeah. Hey, you obviously touched on it there in terms of the reception. Obviously family and friends are going to be more inclined to be more optimistic about it. You would uh, hope so. Yeah, you'd want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. be worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of the uh, critics, what have the critics said? Great feedback. Um, I, I always dread the critics coming out of the water because you are going to you know, have to deal with the, the negative side of it. Um, but so far, it's been amazing. Uh, one of the best quotes was like, Dublin Crust is like train spotting, meets the commitments and has an illegitimate love child with the full Monty. So that was a lovely one. Um, and then, you know, just uh, feel good hit of the year and uh, it mixes comedy with drama really well. And so we've had some amazing things that we can use uh, on our posters so far anyway. Yeah. It seems like a very uh, Irish film, dark comedy. Absolutely, that comedy with a lot of drama. Like it, it, it's, it is a comedy, mm. and, and it's kind of hard. But there's a lovely undertone of very serious messages going through, through it all, which is a credit to Baz and his writing, and then to the preparation of it all. Then Baz as an actor, and then going to the directing side to work with him, getting the message across with his actors and the, the talking, and because there's a bit of play in it as well. There's a few mm. characters that have a bit of play time, which the comedy really comes through. But when those two characters are kind of taken out, it's it's a drama at its core. I would, I would yeah, think. it's kind of it's uh, it's kind of like you know if you like Roddy Doyle style movies and yeah. you know, the, and I, I hate to be compared to them because they're such amazing <laughs> yeah. classics, yeah, you, you know, yeah, you like them so, up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hate to be compared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Roddy Doyle, yeah, Shane Meadows. Yeah, yeah, I hate yeah, to be compared, yeah, yeah. but Christopher those. Nolan, yeah, 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 um, but yeah, because you know, um, on the nose comedy is so hard to write, it's so difficult to get right. Um, but this is like deep rooted into the sarcastic style humor of the Irish that we get. And you know, I was I was worried at how that would translate um, when you take it abroad. But we've been in festivals in the UK, and um, the Americans were lapping it up; they were loving it, and the the UK audience were laughing at stuff that the Irish wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. find funny and stuff, you know. So the hopefully vice, vice versa, then vice versa, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Irish bits of it that the Irish would really like. There's a part where he's on the phone and he's like, "I haven't got much credit on my phone." I find that funny because that was an issue. You didn't have credit on your phone, yeah. so I can't call me. Keep on, yeah, call me back. Yeah, text yeah. the message, which Americans wouldn't really get that reference, mm. whereas the Irish audience would. And then, as you said, there, there's parts then that we wouldn't overly find funny that the UK and the American audiences yeah, would were. just. So it's amazing when you see with different audiences what they react to to what you think, because mm. there's obviously some bits that are straight up set up gags. We'll say meant to be funny you're yeah. hoping you're aiming for a laugh slapstick ones like yeah. Monty Ponty Point and Foggy Towers exactly. exactly like even with my character Mickey and you have um, Jeremy played by William Morgan mm. his character when the two of us are kind of on screen you're nearly expecting a bit of a joke so you're, you're hoping the audience will laugh but then there's parts where like both our characters are being serious and that gets massive laughs. I was like, oh, that wasn't meant, meant, <laughs> that to, wasn't be, meant to be. That wasn't meant to be a laugh. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, um, you know, Paul's character, Mickey, and William Morgan as Jeremy, uh, they are the comic relief of the movie because it is primarily, in my opinion, a drama. And the comedy is is used as a relief in between the heavy topics that it's dealing with, you know. Um, and it is a character-based study of these guys' lives, and their lives are basically fractured. And, you know, it deals with a lot of topics of, of why their lives have gone the way they have, you know. So when you break it up with a little bit of comedy, it gives you a bit of breathing space, you know, without going too over the top, yeah. Yeah, well, any sort of uh, artistic expression, essentially, you're trying to connect with the audience. That's it, And yeah. usually, c comedy, it's the hardest thing to hit, but when you hit, the connection is the most real. Because with, with that, with comedy, like, for the example of just two, two characters I mentioned, Mickey and Jeremy by William, the two characters, aren't in themselves funny. So the character Mickey... They're the funniest type of people. Though. Exactly. Mm. Cause it, he's funny, but he doesn't know he's funny. That's yeah, it, that's, that's it. it. And that's yeah, comedy. That's the trick, that's you know. Yeah, that's, that's real. Genuine. Especially with Irish kind of yeah. comedy, because it, this my character, Mickey, 
you know him. Mm. You know a fella like him. He's a wheeler and dealer. I'm sitting bleeding beside yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just him. I was an actor. I wrote it for him. Uh, I'm actually very proud of Limerick man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was acting very hard to pretend I cared about the Sam Maguire when I actually loved the Limerick character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, when you see it, you know him. Like you've seen this kind of guy before out in the streets, which makes it more funny because you're thinking of oh that Mickey is actually Johnny down the road kind of a yes. way. And it's the same then with Jeremy. That, that character Jeremy as the boss everyone has a boss yes. it's a small but exaggerated but everyone knows a boss like mm. this kind of thing like uh, Ricky Gervais in The Office That's kind exactly. of stuff yeah. genius yeah. 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 that kind of stuff my boss is really nice just so you know <laughs> he's the best boss <laughs> the in best the world boss ever, ever. Uh, I'll see you in January for an El Payroll yeah, financial year starting again because that he's the best yeah, yeah. He's, the best. <laughs> he's the best which camera is he watching yeah, yeah. which one <laughs> down the line down the line uh, you've wrote obviously a few short films yeah. Uh, you said in an interview that you always knew you were going to do a feature and this may be the one. What what attracted you in terms of, was it your own experiences, because it's based loosely on your time as a punk rock band, uh, or was it the characters that drew you to make sure to make this your first feature film? Yeah, it was definitely, you know, they say write about what you know, and I, I have been a punk drummer like all my life, um, and the singer Eddie and the guitarist Andy in the movie, I was in a band with those guys for eight years. Uh, and then Joe Rooney, um, who people know from Father Ted, uh, he joins us on the bass, but he had his own band Guernica back in the day, so he is a musician. But um, no, it was based around the bands that I've been in and my experience. So this is my most personal story. So I knew I was kind of saving this for the, the feature film um, and writing from, you know, real life experiences. And it's like art imitating life. Mm. My favorite there quote is, that I've been going Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I had a dollar. Why I had a dollar. I hate myself for saying so <laughs> much. Every interview that needs to be said. Otherwise, <laughs> what's the point of doing these things? Just one more time for the camera. Yeah, yeah. One more, yeah. Down the art. Imitating life. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new caption of the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it is. And kind of what kicked off the question that I found myself asking was all these crazy people that used to come to our gigs or bands that we used to tour with and all that. I, I often wonder, like, where are they now? Because they were such extreme characters. And I'm, I asked myself, like, did they have to conform to society standards and get a nine to five job? And, you know, I just kept asking myself, thinking of all these crazy people. And that's where the story started, that the band has split up 10 years and it revisits their lives the band members to see where they are without the band and they're basically all miserable without the music and they don't realise it until they get back together that that's what's missing from their life you know yeah now I can actually see the parallels with the commitments and the Monty point uh, the Full Monty references yeah yeah it that's musical obviously Full Monty all lads dead end jobs coming back to revisit something that's it the it's and the trans button thrown in just, yeah just just, 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 just throw yeah. 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 it's yeah. Dublin you have to the trans button yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah it's like a working working class character base style of movie which is mm. the kind of movies that is drawn to me I love those kind of style of music and it's really important that you don't have to like punk music, even though the soundtrack and the songs, you know, I'm biased, but they are amazing. And people who don't like that music when they watch it, they're like, it's, it's incredible music. But it's not about that. It's about rooting for these characters. And, you know, they may be fractured in one way or another, but you should be rooting for them. And you do want them to reform and get their lives back on track. Yeah. Speaking of characters, uh, obviously, you've said that your uh, early days in the punk rock band, you weren't necessarily ever the greatest band but you were lunatics. <laughs> and yeah. the head lunatic was Eddie. He was yeah. actually in the film as well. He is, yeah. Uh, like, how important was it for you to keep it authentic as possible and actually have, like, the front man in the film from your actual... Yeah, from well. Inception, that was, like, vital to it because when you see the film or anybody who knows Eddie and Andy, you can't replicate those guys, you know? <laughs> um, we had to tone it down quite a bit from <laughs> the antics of the actual <laughs> band because we never would have got a cinema release without yeah. it. But, um, you know, the two lads had never done acting before, so that was a major, major risk. And, you know, stepping into unknown waters there with them. Uh, but again, anybody who's seen the movie, the authenticity of it, because when we're sitting around and we're speaking as a band, it is because we were in a band for so long that it is like you're a, a fly on the wall just watching these guys. And it's very naturalistic. And that was really important, um, you know, that it didn't sound scripted. And I wanted them to be themselves. So Because it's even with that as well, with, <clears throat> with Eddie and the character, like he himself has said... He didn't overly enjoy the kind of acting process because he isn't an actor, even though he's a frontman of a band. But this film, Dublin Cross, he could not be in it because it, it's ultimately his story as well mm. of of Eddie, and it, it's him 
being himself. The character's name is Eddie. His real name is Eddie. It's the same with Andy. <laughs> but Andy right. wants to be an actor. And the two of them are very talented actors. Mm. But Andy, I think, will do more acting. Whereas Eddie, I think, will only do... If he should do more, he is fantastic. Mm. But yeah, I think he'll only stick to... As you said, if you ring him, he'll do it. Mm. But I don't think if he'll continue with the, the acting side of it. Because yeah. this movie, it's him. What you're seeing on the screen is him. Which is the perfect style of acting. Do you want to be yeah. original and authentic? But it's, <laughs> he is just himself. He is. And, and he, was, he was worried, terrified that it was going to be awful. You know, he, like, he <laughs> went to the screening that we had initially back in December in the Whale Theatre. And he went in there thinking this was going to be like a car crash. And he was shocked at himself yeah. how good he is in the movie. And everybody has commented and they cannot believe that he hasn't acted it before. Because the hardest thing an actor to do is to be natural in front of the camera. Be authentic. It, yeah. We turn into this robot like actor, you know, I say the script like this, whereas he's just being himself and everybody is just like, that's amazing acting because he's just being himself, you know. You had something like 30 odd locations in like Tur five days or something uh, crazy. 32 locations in seven, seven days yeah. across three counties, yeah. So it was absolutely Easy work. I mean, <laughs> easy work, yeah. Over again, well paid. It started off as a six week shoot, um, but just budget constraints, that was the only way that we were able to get it done mm. and um, like I learned a long time ago two things in just from making short movies and um, on that side of it is always have as many options as you can in the room so shoot as much as you possibly can and like I said if you want to try stuff if you have time throw it up there you never know what you can use in it um, and then the other thing is to cheat the brain from a low budget you'll see a lot of low budget features and they will have two or three locations because there are budget constraints mm. and moving is just not an option but we ignored that rule, even though it nearly <laughs> killed us, because um, from a psychology point of view, you, you're traveling with the story. And if you keep banging out the locations, your brain is naturally traveling and there's no time to start thinking about the budget. You know, if you're back in the same house for the 13th time in the movie, you start thinking, oh, there's no money, yeah. you know. But if you keep banging them out, your brain's going with the story. And that's what everyone said. The pace of it is lovely. It grabs you at the start and doesn't mm. put you down then until it's finished, you know. And we got lucky with locations too, purely through Baz and his own connections and the likes of Dundalk and Loud and stuff and the pubs that we used. Because there's three or four different pubs that are yeah. used. Which, no, as he said, you're in different places. Mm. You're not going back to the same pub or... Because you, you, you could have... Like there's maybe four or five different pub scenes we'll say mm. in the film. You could have shot them all in the one day, in the one location, in different little areas, and made life a lot easier mm. for everybody. But the fact they're in different bars and it's complete different setups, you have moved, the days have moved, and yeah. that shows in the film. Yes. You've obviously been an actor from a very young age. Mm. Uh, you've done Killing the Scully. Uh, what is the man himself like, Pat Short? Is he funny in real life, is he? He is, he's a gentleman. Is oh, he? I was in Killing the Scully when I was 10 years old. So that's when I first got the bug. So I started in Limerick School of Acting, um, literally in primary school, Nigel Mercier, a teacher came in, instantly fell in love with it, and then after a year, auditions for Kinless Gully came up. So I went, it was like a GA hall kind of style audition. You literally went into a GA hall in Tipperary, into a back room, all these cameras, similar to this setup, all these lights, put onto a little 10 year old boy, being like, just what's your name? What would you do in school? And I was messing, Pat wasn't there that day, but he saw the tape and got, I got Clancy. Clancy was already cast, and then I auditioned for a much smaller part and got, he saw that middle of theirs, we'll use him for Clancy. So then the character grew in the first season, I was in one episode and I met Pat very briefly, but Pat was, first of all, he was extremely busy. He's playing five characters, yeah. writing, he's nearly half directing, he is being pulled every which way. So the first time I met him, it was kind of like, oh, hi Pat, got the photo. But through the second and third season, properly got to meet him and he is absolutely a gentleman. What you see is, what you get, he's extremely hard working, but he is a very, very pleasant and nice man. He turned us down for Dublin Crust, though. Yeah, but Joe didn't, which was also a kid in the school. Joe plays Tim Eagle, because he's Father Damo and Father Ted for an episode. I think he's in 40 episodes of Killing the Scully. Ah, oh, but he's renowned for Father Ted. He is Father Damo, yeah. And the whistle. <laughs> and, the whistle. Father Damo. and he's actually in the airplane episode. He doesn't have any dialogue, but he's sitting there in one of the seats in the airplane. He told oh, me, yes, yeah, yeah, so there's a little... Right, it's claim to fame. Yeah, 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 the name of the episode, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Joe, Joe is brilliant to work with. Like, he's, he's unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the actual cast you have is remarkable especially for an independent film mm. uh did you personally cast them yourself or did you have a project manager who reached out and done the casting oh, yeah we did all the the casting ourselves and um, i would have wrote a lot of the roles for particular people i knew like mm. you know paul's character mickey and um, just actors you know who i would know and when you write with someone in mind like that it is amazing because uh, you know exactly how they're going to what they're going to bring to the character um, and then you know even with Joe uh, 
he he actually Joe reached out to me about my short film uh, Meryl, which is about Irish mythology about a mermaid. And he was like, he, he's, he loves all that kind of stuff. And he was like, can I see it? Uh, so that's how the conversation started. And then um, I think Joe said, oh, if you have anything in the future, like give me a shout. And um, when I was writing Dublin Crust, I, I started writing Terence, the bass player, for him. Because you'll find with a lot of comedians that they love changing over to a slightly darker role. You know, yes. they don't always want to, you know, play the the comical side of it because Terence is quite a dark character in it you know mm. he's a drug dealer and he's menacing and everyone's terrified of him so he relished that fact that he got to play you know a bit of a bad guy um, for a change um, but yeah the, the cast and then yeah we just opened it out we didn't um, we did some auditions for a few characters but pretty much we kept it close knit but there's 38 cast as well which is you know huge for an indie film um, and again I'm so biased but like and I've watched it over a thousand times like there's nobody that lets it down. Like everybody just plays a role so well. They fit in perfectly. Nobody jumps out at being actory. You know, it's all very natural. I mean, the two girls, um, Louise McCann <clears throat> and Leanne Bickerdike are amazing in it as well. And it was really important to have their character arc because they're driving the story along as well. You know, so I'm um, really happy with the cast. I can't wait to go see the film myself. Uh, but for the people watching at home, where and when can they see the film? Friday the 1st September it is nationwide in 10 Omniplex yeah, screens yeah initially yeah so Rat Mines Galway Limerick Limerick <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> there Liam yeah. County yeah bring Liam to the premiere <laughs> yeah so the way it is because we're indie and they've given us 10 locations for the first week if it does well enough that's going to double and start rolling out across nationwide. Um, we have sold out seven screens already, so it looks like we might get the rollout. Start <laughs> imitating Louis. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there seven go. screens there. That's People going to be the, the title that is in the yeah. um, That's my review. Art <laughs> imitates Louis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, Omniplex have been incredible, you know, giving us this opportunity because we're independent, rolling it out, and they have been amazing. So it's released tomorrow in the Omniplexes. Um, we have a Q&A in Dundalk tomorrow night, which is sold out. Mm -hmm. um, we're in Limerick on Sunday, which is sold out. And then we're in Galway on Monday, there for the Q&As. Um, and then it's National Cinema Day on Saturday. All tickets are four euro for all movies. So get out there, not only Dublin Cross, just get out there and support the, cinema, the movies yeah. and the cinemas, get the word going. And um, we're in the Whale Theatre on the 14th and 15th in Greystones they're both sold out and there's, there's a few tickets left for the 15th, for the 15th. and we're in, in the, the Audion Audion release is the, the 15th of September it'll be nationwide audience so it's the Omniplex first from the first and then the Audion on the 15th we're having a big uh, premiere with Audion on the 13th in the Point Village beside the Arena uh, which is completely sold out 140 seats sold out uh, they couldn't believe how fast it sold out. So it's amazing. And this is what we need. Like, you know, we are indie and it's the public getting behind it. And after COVID and all the misery, it's a film that you can go enjoy, have a laugh, you know, get invested in it. And it is a movie that it's a cinema movie, you know, just go out, get your friends and just go, go enjoy it. But um, just to touch on that as well, it's supporting Irish. So yeah. everyone who go to the cinema it saw Oppenheimer, Barbie, these massive blockbusters that we all went to see because mm. they're movie, movie, huge movies. This is up there with them, like, mm. in terms of quality and story and obviously not in terms of budgets. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but we, yeah, and so far we have been very lucky, but it is just bums on seats, get people in to the cinema to see Dublin Cross. Pretty sure Dublin Cross will go down a tree, will go down a tree, and uh, make sure you catch it in your cinemas near you next Saturday for your tickets. Thanks to... Uh, Paul and Baz today it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, best of luck with the film I'm sure you'll smash it thank Thanks you very much Darren appreciate it. all ours. if you want to read more about this you can find out more on independent.ie